to, to welcome, we've got two speakers today for our April um, research seminar, the first of which is John Dixon, who's come from not too far away from Teesside University. So John is a professor of applied physiology and rehabilitation at Teesside University, and today he's going to talk to us about rehabilitation um, in terms of the use of footwear and, and insoles. So without further ado, John. Thanks, Lisa, and thanks to Lynn and everybody for, for inviting me up here. Did you? It's a really super facility, um, so it's, it's, it's good to be here. See a few faces I've, I've seen before. Anyway, um, yeah, this is really about can textured insoles improve balance and gait? Um, these are insoles, and some of the things you may have seen in the literature over the last decade. I appreciate we're, we're on a tight time scale here, so I'll, I'll stop me rambling if I do or when I do ramble. Um, so, you know, why are we interested in this? Well, obviously, the basic idea is that if you've got enhanced stimulation of the plantar receptors on the sole of the foot, then this should theoretically get more information to the central nervous system about balance foot pressure, and it could, in effect, improve balance and gait. And it could, if it works, be very helpful in you know, healthy aging and rehab, etc., self-management of conditions where mobility is a problem. We started this getting on for a decade ago now, which is, which is amazing. I guess shows how slow research goes, you know, and how difficult it is to move things along. But back then, there was no clear, consistent evidence um, of effects, and you could argue the situation hasn't changed there. Nor anything about causal mechanisms. Um, there's a little bit out about that now, and this does kind of fit into the theory and evidence of um, automaticity of gait and enhanced um, sensory information improving that. So there's one paper that came out in 2014, um, in that respect and I'm happy to talk to people afterwards if, if they're interested in those mechanisms. So why, why is it relevant? Well, you guys know this, you know, balance and walking is important, falls are vitally important, but also um, if people have better balance and gait, they have more confidence and be able to um, be more active and participate in activities, etc. And in that light, we kind of set these within that ICF framework from, from the WHO, so we're not just measuring, you know, body structure and function for the sake of it. It's to improve part of participation and quality of life in the end. Lisa was just asking me, what, what are they? Where do you get them? Well, nobody makes these yet that I'm aware of. We, um, there are a few down there that you can pass around if you, if you want, Lynn. And that's good because I'm, I'm not particularly convinced these things do anything in conditions where it's important, but I, I'm the kind of cynical one of the team. And we obviously don't want people flogging things if, if they don't do anything in real life. So the main, the main insole we've used is the one that um, Lisa's just passing around there. It's basically some soling material from Algius, the company in Liverpool. Um, and we've, in, some, in some studies, we've just pe had people standing on these sheets um, on a force plate. In other ones, we've cut them to shape and had them in, in shoes. And Peacocks from, from Newcastle have been really helpful in doing that for us over the years. We've also tested, I, should, I haven't got a light or anything. Um, we've also tested some more concave designed things here in the first couple of studies. We've also used a Crocs insole, which is going around, which was available for a couple of years and has since disappeared, but that's another story. Um, and we basically measure balance, as, as you guys do here, um, using a force plate and measuring the centre of pressure. And we look at the, particularly the amount of sway um, in the anterior posterior direction and in the medial lateral, which is known to be a kind of risk factor for falls. And we look at um, the speed of sway as well. So the studies I'm going to talk about here, really, we started off with, with Anna Hatton's PhD, looking at young and older people. Then we moved on to people with, who've had a history of falls, people with MS, and we're still doing some work on that. And um, five of these have been funded by research grants from research charities, so I guess that kind of shows hopefully that there is some impact in this, should we be able to provide you know, robust evidence that it does work. So we started off with Anna's PhD, Keith Rome and I, um, were supervisors for, and Dennis Martin joined us um, shortly after he arrived in the area. And we basically, Anna did some superb work. Um, we basically wanted to know at the start, you know, do textured surfaces do anything, and do different surfaces do anything different, if you like? So does the shape matter? And we also did some EMG work to try and find out um, the underlying mechanisms. We, the EMG basically didn't show anything, so I won't, I won't bother you with that. But it was a basic, very simplistic um, set up here, so it was standing on a Kistler force plate with sheets of textured surfaces. Um, so we had this textured one, which is the pointy one, smooth control, and a more kind of concave one at the end, randomised, etc. This, this was 25 
Um, young, healthy people. I think there was nobody older than 43, if I remember rightly. The mean was 27 years. And basically, one of the interesting things with textured insoles is something almost happened here with the eyes closed. And that's what a lot of the data that we've done, a lot of the studies that we've done and other studies from other groups have shown that the effect appears only when visual input is withdrawn. So you can kind of argue what, what's the functional relevance of that. But that's for debate, I guess. So this one showed, this showed basically a little bit. There was nothing conclusive there, but the two textured, the two textured surfaces, basically, there was a significant difference between them. It didn't really tell us anything. I, I'm still not convinced that I know what that means at all. Um, but we published it anyway, and Anna moved on to the second phase of her PhD. And this was to look at um, basically healthy older people. And we got some funding from the British Geriatric Society um, way back in 2007 eight, for this, which helped us do this. So Anna recruited 50 healthy older people with a mean age of 75. I think there the, the, was basically 60 and over that she went for. Um, did exactly the same thing, basically quiet standing, eyes open and eyes closed on a force plate. And what we basically found here, um, again, only with eyes closed, there, there were trends towards this with eyes open, but it didn't reach statistical significance. But you could see from the, the confidence intervals that you know there was potentially something there. But with eyes closed, basically, um, the midilateral range, i.e. the amount of sway sideways, um, was significantly better in, on the textured one, that pointy insole, compared to the control insole. Um, the, the slight trends, therefore, for the velocity and also the, for, the, for the standard deviation of the major lateral sway, which is more, more of a, um, the mark of, of mean sway from over time. And the way we interpreted this, which I think is correct, is basically that standing on textured insoles can improve balance in healthy older people if their eyes are closed. Um, and basically, the, the looking at effect sizes and the you know the magnitude of the effect, those textured insoles improved sway with eyes closed roughly to the same amount as if eyes had been open again. Um, but basically, we, we, as I said earlier, we know that medial lateral sway increases with age more than anterior posterior sway, and there's some data to show that it's a it's basically a risk factor for falls, or certainly more of a risk factor than anterior posterior sway. So we published that in Age and Aging a few years ago now. And then what we, we looked at basically to follow up, Julia Newton from Newcastle helped us with this, and, and, and I met up with her. Um, we got a grant from the Physio Research Foundation, the, the, from the CSP, and we basically wanted to follow this up in a refined way in people with a history of falls. Obviously that's a far more relevant um, population, if you like. We basically, because the, that concave in so it didn't seem to do anything or that concave surface didn't seem to do anything we decided just to reduce down to that texture one that point you want to reduce burn particularly because that where the evidence seemed to show that it was that it was working and we also decided to get these things cut and actually put in people's shoes to to look at the, the you know the functional relevance we don't just fall over when we stand on a, on a forced platform and we also brought in um the gate right here to look at um gear you know all this i'm sure you walk over the gate right and it collects the data um so basically, this was one, I'm sure everybody, we had Gabor Barton from, from Liverpool, our place, yesterday, and he did the same old story. There's loads of people out there, you go and recruit and you can't get anybody. Um, it happens to everybody, everywhere. Um, so basically, we wanted to recruit 50 people to this study, and we could only get 30. But Anna did a really good job. She worked on this as a postdoc. Um, but these people were quite old, as you can see, and they swayed quite a bit. We measured gate with the gate, right, as I've just said. Um, basically, so these were the, then bog standard textured insoles cut by peacocks to um, sh shoe size and shape, and then basically we had a controlled smooth insole to insert as well. And what we found was what we didn't expect in, in the slightest, basically, that there was no effect on balance whatsoever. Um, incidentally, if you look at the kind of the range values here, as I go through these groups, you'll see how these people swear more and more. So. Young, healthy people sway about, you know, 15 millimetres, the range in the anterior posterior. When you get a bit older, healthy people, you're 25 mils. And then we're over 30 here with these, on average, with, with these people who had fallen before. Um, and, and either eyes open or eyes closed, there was no significant improvement of balance. So we looked at the gait data, and we did get some significant effects. But those of you that know your gait data will see that basically... 
the changes went in the wrong direction. So people walked sl more slower with these insoles in than with the smooth insole and stride length um, reduced as well, which is basically, in my view, a worsening of gait. Um, so we've debated that and we've talked to people in various areas. And um, in short, there were no other effects, but there was an effect, but it wasn't the one we wanted on gait. And this is quite interesting, you know, so for balance, you know, did those, was there some effect, but it was just not marked enough to do anything when, to, to this group of people who, who swayed an awful lot, or was there no effect at all because of the, you know, problems with plantar sensation? Um, the, nobody else has done this or, or, or followed this up, and I, th I think it's probably worth, worth looking at or worth following up. Again, we had this immediate effect, so we put these textured insoles in and it was randomised, etc. There was no order effect. Um, and gait was in effect what we would call clinically worse. And this has been, this has been another paper has done something similar, not in fallers, and, but basically with older people with textured insoles and found this shortening of stride length and, and, and reduction in velocity. And, and we, we call this a more cautious gait, and they've done, I think they've just cribbed up us, they've, they've called it a more cautious gait as well. And some people argue that's better because if it's more cautious, then you're not gonna, you're not gonna fall. But I'm not, I'm not particularly convinced on that, and I, I'm the one basically that's confused at the bottom. Um, so we published it anyway, um, and, as you do. Um, and it's interesting, isn't it? And that, you know, I could, I could chat on about this for ages and be interested in, in clinical and, and scientific views on this. That's what we got. Um, and the, st the story could have kind of stopped there, but while we were doing that study, we put in a grant to the MS Society because we talked to uh, we talked to Jane Petty, who was the, the lead physio for the MS Society then, um, and we put then we got this grant before we got the results for that because had we got those results, we'd have gone, these things don't do anything, you know, end of story, short presentation, um, but that didn't happen. So we got this, um, the, the MS Society kindly funded with one of their innovative awards a one-year study to look at this basically in people with MS. Um, so I'm sure all the physios here will know, you know, um, um, balance is impaired, we've known this for a long time, gait is impaired in people with MS. Um, interestingly, from, you know, gait right data, that, that good lab data, that, I think that's the first study I'd seen. When we started, we couldn't really find anything marked, any really good quality data on gait, or not a lot of it. And this kind of came out once we, once we got the funding. So there is good evidence there, except that there are all of the variables that you expect to be impaired, basically are impaired generally in people with MS, given the heterogeneity of the condition, of course. So we wanted to find out basically whether textured insoles were good. And this was very much an exploratory study. Um, in that one year, with the, sh the small amount of funding that we got, we couldn't do anything bigger, basically. And obviously, it wouldn't be ethical to, to dive into RCTs without some you know, early um, phase one type evidence. So this was basically anybody 18 to 65 and we, the, the key criteria here were people who could self-report and walk up to 100 metres, so you're talking an EDSS of, of six. Um, we, we recruited 46 people. We, we kind of, we diddled around in this to, with this to use the scientific term. So we kept with that textured one insole, which we thought was good. Um, and Dennis Martin, who's a, a, a professor of physio down at our place, he, he'd seen these Crocs insoles um, that were available at the time, and we thought they're really good. You know, they're not as the softer, and they've got a cupped heel, but they've got a texture in there. And more importantly, you can, or you could at the time, buy them off the shelf for 19.99. So obviously, that would be really good if if we found some benefits, and people could just buy these things for a really cheap price. Um, so all our previous work had been single session. Um, here, we basically decided to add in a two-week intervention. And I have to say, being open, we, we did that because that was one of the uh, MS Society's criteria for, for awarding us the grant. They wanted a longitudinal component in there. Um, so we, we did that. And basically, we had <coughs> two insoles. So, you know, you have to bear in mind with, with this study that the two textured insoles are not comparable, really, but they are two textured insoles. Um, so everybody wore them all within session. In, um, in a randomised order, but then everybody was randomised to wear one or the other of the textured insoles for two weeks and then come back and be retested. Um, and what we found, guess what, we found no immediate effect on balance or gait. Oh God, geez, no. Um, 
and this is where, to me, it really got confusing. But after two weeks of wearing them, there was still no effect on balance. And bear in mind, I haven't, I haven't got any data here, I think. But these people, you know, the mean AP sphere was up to 40 millimetres for this people. So, you know, as, as I'm sure a lot of you clinicians know, a lot of people with MS have really poor postural control. So these people were swaying a lot, you know, double the amount of, of young, healthy people and nearly double the amount of healthy, older people. Um, but anyway, so we didn't get anything on balance. But the gait, after two weeks, basically there were some positive changes. So stride length increased in both legs. And it was in the Algios group and also in that black textured insole group. Sorry, in the, in the Crocs group and in the Algios insole. Um, and interestingly, we got these people and they came out, we got them to walk with the insole and without it. And the improvements were there with and without the insole. And this led to big, big debate, as, as you can imagine, about, um, again, I'm being, being the kind of cynical, cautious is a good word, person. Um, there were some other little findings, but basically what we were interested in was whether that. this was a kind of sensory learning effect. And me and Anna kind of, Anna happens down in Australia now, and we kind of, we still work on things together. And she's got very. She had very. Was very. And this is not being. I'm not being critical of Anne at all, especially as I'm being recorded. Um, <laughs> but she was very much of view that there's some kind of sensory learning thing going on here, and they've improved, um, you know, their sensory motor capabilities from the, from these insoles. Whereas I was kind of well, is it just a placebo type thing, or they're in a study? Is it a Hawthorne effect? Have they been more active with these things over two weeks? Um, and we don't know. We didn't know. We still don't. Um, so that we've, again, talked to people in, um, in various areas about this type of thing as to what, what it means, what the mechanism is, and we don't know from that. And, you know, you can, you can, take, the, you know, you can take the positive approach, I guess, and we, we should really, that it really, do, you could argue it doesn't matter what produced that improvement, if it was an improvement, and, it, and if it carries on, you know. So there is, there, is a, there is a positive way to look at that, but I'm still, I'm still kind of... I'm not quite sure, you know, these people were in a study, they came back, whether, did they just feel better in the lab, etc. Um, I don't know. You can tell me at the end. So, we published that, so that just came out in um, 2014. Um, and there's a ton of data in there, but obviously most of it says no effect. And there's, we, can, we can discuss that, you know, for a long, long time. Um, but what we did, we basically applied back to the MS Society, after we had the results, you know, um, just basically you say, can we look at this in a um, long-term study? So we basically got a PhD studentship grant from the MS Society, which Jenny Barron's just finishing working on. This was 2013 to 16, so she's got she's got another kind of few months left on on her PhD. Um, and this was to see basically what the long-term effects were. It, it was very much a PhD studentship grant, so it's not a large study. Um, People are randomised to, I'll show you a, a little bit about it, but it's not one where um, there's a massive amount of funding in there, unfortunately. One of the key things, I guess you could argue, fortunately for us, that the key component or key outcome is the training of the student in research methods around MS. But and this was another, none of these things have gone straight forward in the slightest, which I guess is research. But um, you can see the nice publicity picture at the start, waving a Crocs insole. So we, we were going to basically use the same things that we used in that in that previous study. So a smooth insole, a um, textured insole from Algios and a textured Crocs insole. And we went to Crocs, um, and as I'm being recorded, I, I, won't, I won't go into the detail, but they said they're not, they're not making them anymore, so we couldn't have them. And we don't know why, because um, they look beneficial and they, they weren't very you know, communicative about it. So we basically had to drop the Crocs arm. Um, I should have kind of felt tipped it out with the photo, <laughs> but I haven't. But anyway, um, so this was early into to Jenny's PhD, so we did some rethinking and basically we wanted to do a three group one. What we were also interested in was the effect of the smooth insole, because obviously you could argue this might not just be texture, it might be putting another insole in the shoe and tightening the whole of the shoe and increasing plantar pressure, etc. Um, that's a, a potential other mechanism that no one had really thought about. So we basically shifted this into a, a textured insole arm a smooth insole arm and a no insole arm. Um, and we wanted to get three, this was going to be basically an exploratory RCT, we wanted to get 
90 people into this, and there's a big qualitative component as well, which is important. But basically what we ended up with, Jenny only managed to recruit 35 people. It's not her, it's not her fault at all, I think there's multiple factors in there. So we've basically got some exploratory work, which doesn't tell us a great deal, which is terrible, really. You think But um, I don't have findings here today because we're still, we're still finalising those. But the, basically, the, the long and the short of it looks that, and I want to go over the data in, in big depth before we kind of you know, publish it, but there's some immediate effects in the textured insole group but there's also some immediate improvements on balance in the smooth insole group as well. So it looks at that texture smooth, no insole thing it was an, an interesting thing to look into. But basically what we've got is over the three months, there's no, there's no improvements to balance or gait. And you could argue with 35 people in heterogeneity, etc. that's potentially what's going to happen. Um, but Jenny's got some, haven't, Jenny and Dennis Martin, who who's a, does a lot of quality work, are working on the, the quality of the components, and there's lots of interesting findings in there um which i'm sure you know when we when we get around to disseminating those they'll probably chime with a lot of you people that work with people in ms some people like wearing these insoles and i have to say in the in the time constraints we did we did touch a little bit upon this in the first ms study that we did that some people said they could feel the feet better wearing these insoles when we came to do a lot more of that in in this study some people hated them some people liked them. Some people said I'd wear them if they worked. You know, and we got we didn't get a, a consistent, um, qualitative answer really, which is probably what, exactly what you'd expect, apart from from idiots like me who don't do any qualitative research. You know, um, so basically, that's that's just being written up now in the last lot of the the, the analysis to come through. Um, we're obviously as a, as an you know an exploratory trial. We'll, we'll take the standard deviations. From that, that's really what you do these exploratory trials for to power a, a, another future definitive trial, if you like. Should it be, um, should it be worthy for, should it be required from the data? I'm not particularly sure now that it is, but we've started a bit of, we've got a student going to look at some EEG to look at these mechanisms things, which I won't go into because we haven't really got anywhere with it. But in the meantime, in Australia, Anna, Keith, and myself and others put in a bid to. Um, MS Australia, so we've actually got, Anna's got funding down there to do a definitive trial, which is just going to start to recruit to um, pretty soon, so the protocol's just come out in trials last month, I think. Um, the, that, what we did in, in that previous study that Jenny did was very basic, so it was gate right and force play, so Anna's going to do a lot more, she's got a much better lab um, down in Queensland, and she's going to do a lot more in-depth analysis, look at dual tasking, etc. Um, so hopefully that'll either, if you like, put the nail in the coffin of this, or it'll probably do a, a lot better job, um, or a lot more in-depth job to, to tease out if there are benefits in what they are particularly. I'll just, bear in mind the time, see, I've only talked about our studies here, other groups have done work. There, in mainly, I don't think anybody's done any in neurological populations. There's one study by a group led by Calron from Israel that came out, looking at one month's textured insoles, and they found some benefits. Um, they found no benefits to gait, but they did find some benefits to balance after four weeks in people with MS. But their gait work was on, that was on a treadmill, so you know, we know there are differences between treadmill and, and normal overground gait. So there are, despite our, you could argue, negative findings here, there is some other evidence um, that there may be positive benefits from this. There are, I think that the, down in, um, Australia have also got a trial on going looking at this in Parkinson's, I believe Anna's involved in with Graham Kerr. Um, and other, there are some other studies showing benefits in healthy older people. But people have kind of, not, there's not a lot of work being done really in, um, in you know, those populations that you treat as a physio. So you can, this is where you kind of label yourself as world leaders because you've, you've done more studies than anybody else, even though you haven't really proved anything yet. That's what we do. Um, so, you know, these are my kind of conclusions. So there's some, some evidence of improvements in gait and balance to people, but not in all studies. Um, and, and my, you know, kind of key message is really this does suggest any effect is dependent on the population and the impairments it exhibited. Um, it's, you know, you could argue, looking positively, this could be something for, you know, targeted medicine where, we, you know, we look particularly for what people need and what they want, and there may be benefits there. 
but you know my message I go around saying it's terrible really but it's difficult to be sure what some of these results mean until until more work is done or other people do do further work and hopefully some of the current research that's ongoing will provide some more um, definitive evidence if you like and that kind of covers all my points I think so just to thank all of these lovely people and lovely funding bodies that have, that have helped us over the years I've in no way done all of this myself I've hardly done any of it but um, there we go so thanks very much for listening